know what the Bible says? He says, there is but one breath between me and death. You know what the wise man said? He said, why not trust in God? Why would you rather trust in man whose breath is in his nostrils? Oh, you know what he said? He said, why would you trust in somebody who all it takes is for the breath not to come out of their nose and they will die? Oh God, they're so fragile, they're so frail. Why won't you trust in a God who is an eternal breath? A God who will live forever, but you would rather put your trust in somebody who don't have the power to save themselves, believing they can do good for you. Let me tell you something here. If people had the power to make life good, they'd have made it good for themselves. But when they done messed up, and when they have lived like a fool, and when they got caught, what makes you think they'll do good for you? You will be the very one to die like a fool. One in every 113 people will die this year. That means that if there's 113 people in your section, the odds are that one will die before the year is over. And I know you look around trying to figure out who you would rather it be, but the fact is it could be you. Two hundred and thirty-two thousand, thirty-two point nine people will die today. Almost a quarter of a million people will die today. They'll die. And how many of them will die after having gone to somebody's church? Somebody is going to leave the service of the Lord and go home and they won't make it back ever again. 232,000, almost a quarter of a million people will be gone today. It's over for them. In one week's time, enough people will die to wipe Dallas and Fort Worth off the map. In one week, 6,689 people will die in America today. And you mean it couldn't be you? Let me explain something to you. Death is disrespectful. Death cares nothing about you. The process of death can meet you. Listen, I have seen people in the service of the Lord and God catch them away. I have seen people driving down the street and death dismiss them. I have seen young people and old people. I have seen middle-aged people. Death does not discriminate. Oh my God, everybody is up for this. Everybody runs the risk. Everybody is going to die sooner or later. But my prayer is God, when this day comes for me, let me die the death of the righteous. I don't want to preach all of these sermons and then die like a fool. I don't want to go to church all of those years and then die like a fool. I don't want to read my Bible and tell other people about the goodness of the Lord just to die like a fool will die. I know too much I have too much of an experience to die like this just wonder who's next sometimes I wonder who's the next to go Because the fact is, I've preached plenty of funerals. I don't even know how many. I preach teenagers, people younger than teenagers. I preach little children's funerals. 
I've preached hundred year old people funerals. I've preached people's funerals that were middle aged and thought they had the best of their life still in front of them. I've preached people's funerals who just got caught slipping. People who didn't have to die like they died. People who took a chance. And this is why we preach like this. This is why we try our best to save souls. You know what? People misunderstand the preacher so much. You'll preach and people will walk away saying that's just that preacher's opinion when the fact is we know of a reality that you're not thinking about right now. We're trying to save the soul, not just the body because we know that one day you got to go this way and if you ignore me now, oh God, could I preach? If you ignore the preachers now and go home and say, listen child, that's just the way the preacher preaches. We don't believe that kind of stuff in this house. You can do what you want to do. He can't tell us what to do. You my child. I'll raise you like I want to raise you. Well, if you don't want me to tell them the truth now, then when they die, don't expect me to say nothing good. I know he was your baby boy. I know she was daddy's little girl. But the fact of the matter is, with your help, she died like a fool. So I ask God, God, what is this all about? What is the end of all of this? And you know what God told me? God said, this is it right here. This is what it all comes down to. This right here. That's what it comes down to. Young people, I want you to listen to me. Living that fast life comes down to this right here. Thinking you know more than everybody else. Like you just came in here already knowing what was good for you. Like you came in here knowing how to make it. This is what it all comes down to. Oh God, you know. And the thing is now, television has so warped the minds of people. They'll see people die Monday, but they back alive on Friday. And now these young people don't understand that when you die, you will never come back. So they're playing around, acting like death don't mean nothing to them. Hey, kid, I'm going to be a gangster. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and you can't tell me what to do. Well, fine, if I can't tell you what to do, guess what? Somebody out there is going to tell you what to do. And I hate for it to be too late for you. After all of this preaching and after all of these church services that you have been to, after all of this time you have spent in the house of God, I'm just trying to figure out what do you you want me to say when they roll you in tell me now what you want me to say about you people don't understand they want you to lie over them Oh, she was such a good person. She accepted Christ at an early age. Yeah, but later on in age, she lived like a dog. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. You want to know what they did when they were six? She got baptized when she was six years old. Well, yeah, with 17, she started hoeing around and selling her body. And don't you tell me that I got to preach her in heaven because she ain't there. She went to hell like 